This video is about solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. Now the way that I like to do the quadratic formula is I break the problem up into basically like two different pieces. The first thing I do is find the discriminant. And remember the discriminant is this part with inside the square root or the radicand of the square root. Okay. Once I find that, I'm going to substitute this square root value in to the formula at the same time I'm plugging in the opposite of b in 2a. All right, uh, so I've got a few examples here. Hopefully I cover all bases. Here are the steps to follow for solving the quadratics as well. First problem I want to take a look at, and again, remember the directions are solved. Let's say we have 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 equals 0. Now, as we've been talking all along with quadratics, it has to start off being in standard form. This is in standard form. I'm going to identify that a is 2, b is 11, and c is negative 6. First thing that I want to do is find the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. And let's see what we get here. I have 11 squared, which is 121, minus 4 times 2 times negative 6. So that would be 121 plus uh, 48, which would be 169. My discriminant value is 169. So now what I want to do is look at the square root of it. All right, this is step two. If I can take the square root, I do it. If I can't, then I just leave it as the square root of 169. Okay, I know that the square root of 169 is exactly equal to 13. Okay, this 13 is going to go into the formula now, along with the other pieces. So in the formula, I have x is equal to the opposite of b. So because b was 11, the opposite would be negative 11, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which we found to be 13, divided by 2 times a, which would be 2 times 2 in this case. Now, there's that plus or minus again. Remember, that creates two different scenarios. The first one is negative 11 plus 13 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And the second one is negative 11 minus 13 over 4. I simplify each of these. Uh, negative 11 plus 13 would be 2 over 4. Negative 11 minus 13 would be negative 24 over 4. And then if I can simplify them further, I do. I get x is equal to 1 half and negative 6. And these are the two exact locations where this graph will pass through the x-axis. All right, let's look at a second example. In this scenario, let's say that we have the quadratic 2x squared minus 3x minus 6 equals 0. It's in standard form. Identify a is 2, b is negative 3, and c is negative 6. Find the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. I always write down what I'm finding. So this would be negative 3 squared is 9, minus 4 times 2 times negative 6. So this would be 9 plus 8 times 6, that would be 48. 9 plus 48 is 57. Now, I try to take the square root here, but I can't. It cannot be simplified. No worries. Go to the formula. x equals the opposite of b. Now, b here was negative 3, so that means 3 plus or minus the square root of 57 over 2 times a, which would be 2 times 2. I'm just going to go ahead and write 4. Now, this is an exact answer. The problem is we have no idea where that is. So this is where the calculator now comes into play. I'm going to pull out my handy-dandy calculator. And it's very important that you follow the steps to doing this. I'm going to round or approximate these two points. I know it's two points because 57 was my discriminant value. It's very important that we follow how to do it on the calculator, and each calculator could be a little bit different. For this one, I'm going to go 3 plus the square root of 57, get that answer, 
So I hit equals there and then divide it by 4 and get that answer. So one of the positions would be t approximately 2.6. Now the second one, I'm going to take 3 minus the square root of 57. Get that answer by hitting equals and then divide it by 4 and get that answer. And that rounds to negative 1.1. So these locations are a little bit easier to determine as compared to the exact answer, which was 3 plus or minus the square root of 57 over 4. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Sorry, needed to get a quick drink there. All right, question number 3. Let's say that we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 equals 0. And again, let me remind you, I am writing these in standard form. Because they're already written in standard form, I'm able to jump in and say A is 3, B is negative 12, and C is positive 12. If it's not in standard form, you have to do that first. All right. So now I'm going to find the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. Negative 12 squared, that's going to give me 144, minus 4 times 3 times 12, or 144 minus 144, which is 0. I try to take the square root of the discriminant. I can take the square root of 0. I get 0. So now in the formula, I am replacing the square root of b squared minus 4ac with the value of 0. Here we go x is equal to the opposite of b, 12, plus or minus 0 over 2 times a, or 2 times 3. So what is this really saying? It's really saying 12 over 6. Because it doesn't matter if I add or subtract 0, that doesn't change anything. And that tells me that x is equal to 2. So I know that this graph touches the x-axis at 2. It's actually where the vertex is. I know that from the discriminant, and by plugging it into the formula, I know the exact location. All right, let's try one more here. Let's do two more just for fun. So I've got x squared minus 9x plus 21 equals 0. Now, for this problem, I could do completing the square because a is 1, but I noticed that b value is odd. So quadratic formula actually makes this a little bit easier, I think, at least in my opinion. So I've got b squared minus 4ac. That would give me not, negative 9 squared is 81 minus 4 times 1 times 21. This would be 81 minus 84. And I get a discriminant value of negative 3. I know right now I can stop. In our class, we are only dealing with real solutions. That negative 3 tells me non-real or imaginary solutions. So right now I know that there are no real solutions. I don't have anything else to do. What indicates that again is that the discriminant value was negative 3. All right. So I thought I'd throw one more at you guys. Uh, just take a look at this. Let's say that I have 9x squared minus 25 equals 0. All right, so if I'm looking at this problem, 9x squared minus 25 equals 0, the first thing that you've got to be able to recognize is A is 9, where's B? Well, B in this case is 0. There is no linear piece. And then another mistake is C is not 25. C would be negative 25. I can still use the quadratic formula to use this. b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is 0. Minus 4 times 9 times negative 25. Holy cow, I'm going to use a calculator to help me with this one. But this would be 4. I know it's going to be a positive. 4 times 9 times 25. 900. All right, so I've got a discriminant value of 900. I try to take that square root. Now, in Algebra 2, you'll focus a little bit also on how to simplify this square root and plug it in 
as um, an irrational value and find the exact irrational value. Or you can just take the square root of 900, which is 30. Oh, how about that? Okay, so I take the square root. I get 30. Now I'm ready for the formula. X is equal to the opposite of B. Oh, that's negative 0. Plus or minus 30 over 2 times A, which would be 2 times 9. Now be very careful here. Even though that 0 we really don't need, we still have plus or minus 30. So this is really saying 30 over 18 and negative 30 over 18. And you could write that as plus or minus 30 over 18. I can simplify both of these. What value goes into both of them? Hmm, how about 6? So x is equal to 5 over 3 and negative 5 over 3. And again, like I was saying, you could write this as x is equal to plus or minus 5 thirds. Hope this helps. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.